right, guys, welcome to the Serving It Up podcast, where we uncover the stories of individuals through the three pillars of eat good, look good, and live great. Now, today's guest, she's a self-proclaimed food critic and a home cook. <laughs> she's a Canadian food blogger who's eaten around the world. She's a nature girl who fishes and isn't afraid to get her hands dirty, whether it's searching for delicious food spots, riding ATVs, or catching her next meal, she is someone who also knows how to enjoy the finer things in life. Welcome to the podcast, my friend, Christine of x Teen Page. What's up? How are you? I really like that introduction there. <laughs> you gotta make it happen. You gotta make it. Yeah. How are you? I'm good. Yeah, a little bit nervous right now. Okay. <laughs> I know you're nervous, so we'll start this off. I see in the back, you've got your, you got your little tequila. We'll get the point. Like I said, we enjoy the finer things in life, so let's play this game. Cool. So, shall we get started right away? Yeah. Take, you're you're going to grab a shot? I'll do that. I said I'll follow you. All right, so I got a little bit of great use. Yeah. Take a shot. You got yours? Are you pouring yep. yours? All right. Cheers and welcome. Cheers. <laughs> This tequila is so good. It is very good. You haven't tried it? It is very good. Oh, mm -hmm. I don't think you know, but um, I was like a bottle service guy. <laughs> I did bottle service. And no I, way! I carried a bunch of those, so. <laughs> I thought it was only girls that do bottle service. Since when do they have guy bottle service? <laughs> I take care of the booth and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah, don't worry. I'm not prancing around in bikinis or anything. <laughs> Um, all right, so let's first get going here is A, welcome to the podcast. B is, I always ask people, tell me, um, tell me what you eat, I'll tell you what you are. So Brandon Samal, he's someone that was a gourmand, he said that. So I asked you to bring something to the podcast that sort of represents you and that we can eat and sort of just chill and vibe through the podcast. So what do you have? You've got a big giant bowl. Of Instant noodles. Okay. You've got the big... What do you have on top? Uh, so I put some cheese. There's some taboki, which is also filled with cheese. And then I also have um, some fish cakes. Amazing. And then what do you have to drink over there? Is that milkis? Yes. I love this stuff. If you guys haven't tried it, definitely try it. Um, there is uh, milk in there. So if you have a milk intolerance, do not drink it, but it's really good. So you can get some noodles, and I decided that I would go with the uh, Samyang super spicy yes. ramen flavor. I, I am also uh, having the Samyang noodles too. Mine are the stew type. Um, I would have joined you on the two times spicy, but I just didn't have them. Yeah, mine's, mine's the stew type. Mine's the stew, Here's the stew type? Stew type two, two times spicy. Oh, okay. Maybe it, maybe it is the same. I don't know. Fuck okay. it. <laughs> All right. But anyways, I'm going to take a bite of this before we get going so I can get a little, little something in my stomach. But okay. I'll join you on that. Can you join me? All right. Yours looks so good. <laughs> I just had really spicy food last night, too. What'd you have? Um, I went for, uh, like, Szechuan food. It's so good. It's basically like a chicken hot pot in a spicy broth. Have you watched um, Food Wars? Mm, you're on that show, right? No, no, no. That's Fridge Wars. I'm, I'm on like, that's a real cooking show, but Food Wars is an oh. anime. It's an mm, anime. I don't, think, I don't think I've watched that one, no. We'll watch it on Netflix. I used to be like, so, I haven't watched it for so long, and I finally made that dive to watch it. For somebody that's like a chef who likes um cooking shows this was actually yeah, very legit. Shows. it was a legit anime about food and like all that kind of stuff there is a lot of fan service though so just in case you mm -hmm. <laughs> but all right let's get right into this then so we sort of connected obviously through social and um one of the food. <laughs> and food exactly and um <laughs> i was so caught off guard when i first saw your page was that I was like, oh, she's a foodie, cool. But then it's like, she's not posting, you know, my steak dinners or like my pastas and stuff like that. You were literally posting non-typical and, and like sometimes even traditional Asian cuisine. Mm -hmm. and, I was super intrigued. 
And then um, that's where it sort of really got me into asking you about like, where's these things? And I started getting into following your posts and then seeing the comments that people would be. And like, what was your take on some of these things? So let's get right into it, which is the first part of Eat Good, which is all things food. So where'd your love for Asian cuisine come from? You know, you went to Vietnam, Thailand, Japan. Yeah, that was pretty recent that I went there, basically right before COVID uh, started. Um, but my, my love for all types of Asian food, I mean, in particular, I really like Chinese food, Vietnamese food, and Japanese food. I think those are my top three for the Asian ones. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, when did I start really getting into Asian food? I mean, I always hung around with um, Asian people. I think it was mostly in high school that I really started having like a big group of uh, Asian girlfriends and even guy friends. Um, so I guess they kind of introduced me to a lot of the culture um, as well as uh, most of my past relationships have been with uh, Asian guy. It's usually like Chinese, <laughs> a few Vietnamese guys as well. Okay. Um, so I guess I, because I'm dating someone, um, like say for example, my, my ex-boyfriend, he was Chinese and I would like to to uh, cook a lot of food that, you know, he would like too. And plus I like it too. Like Szechuan food is probably one of my favorite foods just cause of that numbing spice that you get in and that like mala component. Mm. Um, it's really addicting for me. <laughs> it's so yeah, I would just, I would just learn how to cook uh, a lot of these dishes. Um, yeah, like you, YouTube uh, also, kind of asking around sometimes as well whenever I try to make a dish yeah. I really put in a lot of effort and make sure that I am trying to make it in the most authentic way um although I do like to cook some fusion dishes as well yeah what was, um, what was the first Asian dish that you remember that you're like whoa like this is Asian food uh, what type of Asian though? Because I don't want to like specify all Asian food as in one. Because they're that, all they're all so different, right? Maybe the one that you remember the most, the one that you're like, "Whoa, I really, really love Asian food," or like, "This was a really cool one." Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter what like type. Oh man. Uh, I mean, I think the. Again, I'm going to go back to the Szechuan food. I think eating Szechuan food really got me intrigued. At, at first, when I had that kind of numbing spice, I didn't really, um, I guess, it's almost like an acquired taste, but I was so intrigued. I'm like, okay, this is kind of good, but it's kind of hurting my lips. Why are my lips tingling? But I kind of yeah. want to have it again. <laughs> like but, um, yeah, so I, I think my, my first uh, dish that kind of really like got me into like Szechuan food at least was uh, Szechuan boiled fish. Uh, that's probably like one of my favorite dishes. The with all the chilies and like the tilapia. Like the yeah, 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 yeah. There's a few ways that you can eat it. There's, there's one that's uh, just in an oil yeah. broth typically, and then there's also one that's more uh, like there's still oil in the broth, but there's a lot of other components as well. Yeah, I like the I like the first one, the one with the olive chilies and stuff. Um, mm -hmm. Big fan of it. So the love creation we came from there. So let's step even back. Where did the love for cooking come from? Ooh, well, because I my, my my dad, I was my gonna, dad was always uh, cook. It's actually it's actually funny because my. My mom is Italian, okay. and usually Italian moms cook a lot. <laughs> but for some reason, my mom didn't really cook that much. Um, it was my dad who did a lot of the cooking in the household. And 
I guess I just kind of grew up like loving food. I would like learning from him. Um, yeah, I was just always, even when I was young, I was just always so intrigued by food. Um, yeah, besides just learning kind of from my dad, I, a lot of the stuff I just learned on my own. Because <laughs> I was yeah. going to say, I was like before, uh, uh, is that you actually cook very well. Like, thank you. You do too, obviously. <laughs> like, what I mean by like, you cook, I want to say, maybe above average society. You know what I mean? Like, you, mm -hmm. you actually go and you cook some authentic Asian foods and you do like the full on, uh, even with like Szechuan stuff. You know, you put the Szechuan peppercorns, you do the mala, you make it as authentic as you can. And that's really, really mm -hmm. cool. I do a lot of research before I cook dishes. <laughs> do you? Like, I do a lot of research. I'll go on YouTube. I'll look at recipes online. Um, I'll, I'll do, yeah, I mean, I would say now I know um, how certain flavors work together, what doesn't work together, just from trial and kind of error kind of thing. Um, but yeah, I do, I do do a lot of research if it's my first time cooking a dish. Mm. I wouldn't say that I ever follow a recipe completely because I don't like to follow recipes. <laughs> so, and I feel like my, my cooking skills are, are pretty decent that I don't have to follow a recipe completely. Um, that's a flex. That's good, though. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the best way to cook. It's honestly yeah, I, I never follow a recipe. The only time I ever follow recipes is if I bake and I never bake. I hate baking. <laughs> I it's love like cooking awesome. savory stuff, but baking is just not for me. Mm. So let's get right into something where you live in Vancouver. Mm -hmm. I used to live in Toronto though. Yes, and then you moved over to the VC. Mm -hmm. You've gone to two places in Canada where the Asian population is pretty large significant and with mm. that obviously comes the food scene yeah with the food scene and um what are some of your what are some of your favorite spots whether it was in toronto or whether it was in vancouver i get asked this question so many times always every every food blogger every chef yeah blogger. everyone's like oh i'm coming to vancouver or i'm coming to toronto like where should i go yeah and I mean, for Toronto, one thing that I really miss about uh, living there is the Jamaican food. <laughs> um, Vancouver doesn't really have that much of a good selection or even just a, a large selection of Jamaican food. Like there's only a few restaurants that I really know of. Okay. Um, but w while I was living in Toronto and I, I had uh, friends or people from Vancouver come down, I would always tell them, you have to get some jerk chicken. Where would you <laughs> tell them to go? Some oxtail. Where would you tell them to go? Um, well, if they're staying downtown, I would tell them to go to Rasta Pasta in Kensington, just because that area is nice too and there's lots to see. And I also did like, uh, the jerk chicken there. Have you been there before? Yeah, so I have, um, me and my friends, we opened up um, a breakfast sandwich spot down there. And I got a couple friends that have some stuff over there too. So it's- Yes, yes, yes. I, I know that, that uh, sandwich place. Yeah, mm -hmm. we, get, we get Rasta quite often. It's good for the price, good portions. It's exactly what you want from, you know, yeah. your local jerk food or Jamaican food. What do you think of their uh, hot sauce? Their hot sauce is good. I love their hot sauce. It's fire! <laughs> Jamaican hot sauces are one of the, one of the most- Their hot sauce, oh my gosh, it is so good. I like it's spicy, it's, but it's, it's so good. There's acidity and everything like that, versus like, mm -hmm. say like Asian hot sauces, it's much more depth and umami, mm -hmm. but Jamaican hot sauce- it, there, There's a sweetness in sweetness uh, Jamaican hot sauces. Yeah. All right. So one, the big thing that I have to talk to you about, and then I think we, me and you, we talk about this often, even just like on, on socials and stuff when we connect is you have really high standards when it comes to food, but then oh, you yeah. have to put a lot of honest reviews about them. 
So you're, you're, you're one of those booty pages where you'll post, it might be a great photo, but you, you will stay like how it is on the caption. You'll be like, honestly, that was not that great. It looks good, mm -hmm. but this is not good or that's not good. And I think mm -hmm. because of how raw and honest your reviews are, this leads to something which is you get a lot of hate. Yeah. Well, what actually kind of got me into uh, food blogging was all of these um, bloggers, I guess, food bloggers on Instagram. Uh, they would post restaurants or, you know, places that they're eating at. And I would go there and I would be not impressed. Yeah. And, you know, it, it just... It's really hard to find an honest food blogger out there because a lot of people are getting paid. A lot of people are getting sponsored to go eat there, you know? Yeah. And yeah, I, I just felt like it was, it was time for someone to be honest. Okay. Yeah. And then how did, um, do you find that the people who follow you, the people who don't follow you, et cetera, there's a, I guess, maybe right from the get-go, a curve in regards to whether they like, like your stuff or not. Because I think we, talk, we talked about it just before we got on, which was they see you first off as, you know, this white girl talking about Asian food. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I get, I get a lot of hate for that. Hate. So you get a lot of hate on a couple things. So that, you get the white girl liking Asian food. You get the thing of, like, you're a self-proclaimed food critic right mm -hmm. no, nothing too crazy like legit and then finally is you're also a very you're very a good looking you're very good looking so all the Thank you. <laughs> all these three bring on this like triple threat of very easy to sort of just attack you right right quick about oh, it yeah. and mm -hmm. how do you handle it because for a lot of people it could be very, very hard and difficult and you know, it could be also very demotivating, right? But you just yeah. keep on going and it doesn't almost phase you and you even throw it back at them sometimes. Well, <laughs> I kind of find it hard to uh, not reply sometimes just because I get kind of heated yeah. and I like to defend myself. Um, and sometimes maybe I should just let it go. <laughs> <laughs> it is a little bit hard, especially, I mean, I've, I've had all types of different comments. I remember this, this one person, uh, he was basically commenting, saying, what do I know about food? Um, you know, uh, commenting, saying that I've had all of this plastic surgery and that's what I should stick to. Uh, like, you don't know anything, just basically calling me a, a blonde bimbo. Yeah. And that's all I know. Yeah. So I, I got pretty, I got pretty heated. Yeah. It's, it's like, it's not easy, especially, but that's one of the big reasons why, like I said, you're a lot, cause when you started doing some reviews for like Toronto stuff, before you went to Vancouver, you were a lot of, a lot of times were Toronto things. And I resonated with what you said. Mm -hmm. So a lot of like your reviews and stuff like that, absolutely correct. You know? Yeah. So that's where the legitimacy came from. Cause, um, for me, at least for me, I was like, she knows what she's talking about guys. Like, uh, she's not wrong. She's just saying the honest truth about a lot. Yeah. Of yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know. It's, it's, it's really tough. Um, I don't know if you've noticed, but I have taken a bit of a step back and a break over the summer um, just because I felt like I needed to do it for myself. I, it was getting kind of um, tough for me. I mean, there was, there's so much more that I want to do with my social media. Uh, I've been wanting to start a YouTube channel for the longest time. Mm -hmm. Haven't got around to that just because I'm so afraid and terrified of all of the mean comments and backlash that I will get if I do start a YouTube and me having anxiety problems, it's like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to handle it. Yeah. What well, sucks because it, it takes away from the stuff that I want to do. The, so yeah, yeah. It, it, it's upsetting, but. 
I feel you. I think I think we'll we'll talk about that in a little bit about when we talk about the life stuff because I want to touch back on that. I think it's something that's very important um, that a lot of people don't realize. But okay, so we'll get there, and then um, let's go into something called in the weeds. Cool. I'm gonna so in the weeds. Okay. You know the term for restaurants, like when a restaurants in the weeds. Sorry, repeat that. What did you say? It's, so I said, do you know the term in the weeds? It's like an industry term that chefs use or the restaurant industry use. It's where we're in the shits. So it's like when all the orders are in, it's like your seven, eight o'clock rush on a Friday. All the oh. orders up. That's called in the weeds. So we try to get ourselves out. So I haven't I, heard of that one. I used to work in a restaurant for, oh. for some time, but I, I haven't heard of that. Yeah, so yeah. Like, it's what we always talk about. It. It's in the weeds. Um, I'm gonna throw you a bunch of rapid fire questions. Oh you, no! <laughs> choose one and answer, okay? We're gonna have some fun. We're gonna have some fun. Okay. All okay. right. Um, most hated food trend. Most hated food truck? Trend. Trend, oh my gosh. <laughs> Honestly, there's so many going on right now. I don't even. I can't think of one off the top of my head, but I, I will say that there is a lot of food trends, especially right now, just because I feel like everyone's bored and they're just trying to like come up with all these crazy things just to get exposure. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know exactly. Okay, I can't think of one off the top of my head. Um, guilty pleasure food. Instant noodles. Okay. Um, yeah, I would, I would say definitely one of them is instant noodles. Yeah. Favorite fast food, commercial fast food? McDonald's. Okay. I love them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, for like favorite fast food overall, I would have to say McDonald's. I do really love, uh, like church's chicken. I love fried chicken too. Um, but overall, I would probably have to just make McDonald's. Okay. Um, last thing you made to eat aside from that instant noodles? The last thing I made to eat or just ate? Made to eat. Uh, congee. <laughs> really? I mean, yeah, I made congee like yesterday. Was it yesterday? Yeah, I, I ate a uh, congee with some... Fried Spam and a fried egg. Yeah. Um, favorite Asian dish of all time? I think I'm gonna have to go back to the Szechuan boiled fish. Wow. Yeah. Hot, hot pot or Korean barbecue? Oh, don't do that to me. <laughs> Excuse Christine, come on. Oh man. I would, I think I have to go with hot pot. I can see that. Yeah. Sushi or dim sum? What did you say? Something or dim sum? Sushi or dim sum? Oh, that's completely different. Dim sum is like breakfast and I don't really eat sushi for breakfast, but. Got uh, Sushi or dim sum. <sighs> like if I had to eat one for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. I'd probably cry. Um, uh, I think I will have to pick sushi. Although I really love dim sum. <laughs> Our last one is noodles or rice? Noodles, just because you can do way more with noodles. Okay. I do love rice, but you can just do way more with noodles. <laughs> okay. So now we've talked a little bit about Christine, the food blogger, and your love for Asian food and how you sort of got started. Let's talk about Look Good. So Look Good is, we talk about health and fitness and aesthetics, and for you, it's a big part um, in regards to, A, you're a food blogger who is very much well in shape. So do you, are you on a certain diet? Like what's your, is your no. routine? Do you even have a fitness routine? Not really. Just uh, a lot of people think that I work out like crazy, but I don't. Okay. Um, 
my mom has said to me before that if I keep eating the way I do, I'm probably going to blow up like a beluga whale. <laughs> okay, how many um, meals a day? I, I work out maybe like once a week. And if I do work out, it's never cardio. I just lift weights and I usually just do legs and butt. Yeah. How, many, how much meals do you eat a day? Um, I usually eat... Uh, it depends because I snack a lot. Okay. Um, I would say that I eat two to three meals, depending. Um, depending, because often, like this is actually my first meal, and it's noon here. I usually don't eat until around like noon or so, just because I feel a little bit nauseous in the morning and I don't really have an appetite. Gotcha. Um. Yeah, so I guess I do a little bit of uh, an intermittent fasting. I think that's what you yeah. call it. Yeah, yeah. I, think, I think I do that, but not purposely. Okay, because yeah. you have a, for, if any person, like whether it's a female, or you, have a, you have a really great ideal physique for a lot of people who would be like, I want to be able to eat my cake and have abs too. Yeah, like, yeah. You're able, you're able to do that. Do a lot of like, a lot of your, a lot of friends or a lot of girls or a lot of people do message and ask you that, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then what, what's your usual reply? Um, I, I usually just say like, I, I don't really follow a diet and I don't really work out. Like I would say someone who works out once or twice a week, can you even really consider that? Um. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think right now I, I just have good genetics. Um, like, even uh, when I was younger, like, a lot of people would be like, oh, like, you must work out a, a lot. And it, it still happens to me all the time now. And I just say, no, I don't. <laughs> um, what about yeah. this then? Um, what did I ask is a lot of food bloggers, I do know a bunch just from like, being in the industry and this stuff that they're only yeah. took for the photo. They don't actually eat the thing at all. They'll pretend to eat Oh it. yeah, no. Is that I get that all the time too. I've received comments and DMs of people saying, do you even eat that food? And I'm like, heck yeah, I eat the food. Like, come on. <laughs> so do you, do you eat all of it? Uh, yeah, most of the time. I, I, I mean, usually I have someone eating with me, Yeah, 100%. Uh, but, but most of the time we do finish it. Mm. And if we don't, there's no food wasted. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> take it home, know. but yeah. And then do you, when you go out for your food reviews or anything like that, do you um, reach out to other people or do... You just go and you just do it on yourself. Uh, like, do do I reach out to uh, the restaurant and say, like, yeah. come to so a, lot people, a lot of people think that food bloggers, you know, they simply just reach out to restaurants and be like, I'm a come. Most of them do, to yeah. be quite frank. But for you, you are choosing these places based on your own preference and what do you want and everything like that. Yeah, I've, I, I have... I'll, I'll be quite honest with you. There has been some restaurants that I have gone to that have invited me uh, to, to come eat for a free meal kind of thing. Um, but when they do reach out, I make sure that I tell them that my review will be 100% honest. So that is something that they need to consider if they want to bring me in. Uh, just because I, I don't want to lie to my audience. If something wasn't good, I'm not going to say it was a wonderful experience. Gotcha. Have you ever, um, have you ever uh, had, uh, like a review and then that, that restaurant told you to put it down? Um, no, I haven't came across that. Um, there's been a, a few times where the restaurant will reach out to me and ask ask me if I want to come in to to kind of try it again. Uh, um, yeah, not really. Not that I can remember, at least. All right. We'll talk now 
into the next part about Christine, not the food blogger, but nature girl. You're like the epitome of what a BC West Coast girl would like to be. You know, yeah. You're the foodie, but you're also the nature girl. Like if you talk to anybody from BC, they're like, you're into food and then you're into nature. It has to be one of two, one of the two. Very hard to find both. Um, you're, you're that. You like to fish. You love to hike, um, ride ATVs, uh, jet skis. You're at the cottage all the time. Mm -hmm. um, was that something that was from the get-go when you, from when you grew, uh, grew up? Or is this something that you just sort of fell in love with as you got older? So my, my dad used to fish all the time when I was younger. So that's kind of how I got into that. Um, I would go fishing with him all the time. And I still go fishing with him all the time. <laughs> um, so that's kind of how I got into uh, fishing. Mm -hmm. And then do you, you go, do you just uh, deep sea fishing or? All types. What's your all favorite? Types. Yeah, uh, just recently I went, I went rock fishing, caught quite a few different rock fish. I like rock fish, it's really yummy. It is very good, it's very meaty, mm -hmm. very tasty. Mm -hmm. um, what's, the, what's your favorite fishing memor memory? <laughs> One, I can't say on camera, I don't think so. Yeah. Uh, there, there was another time, there was another time, um, I was out fishing with my dad, actually, and we had a seal um, on our line trying to get the fish while the fish was hooked onto our line. Really? <laughs> so what happened was, we were trying to reel, but obviously we don't want to screw up our, our line and, and, lose, and lose a lure. Um, so, so one of us was driving the boat while the other one was kind of reeling. And it was, we're basically just trying to fight the seal for this fish. <laughs> and uh, my dad actually had his GoPro on. Um, so the whole thing was recorded. Um, you can just hear me like I was swearing the whole time like oh my god what's going on and I was just like freaking out like I don't know what to do um that was that was pretty fun I think that was pretty recent too that was only like two two years ago maybe what's the what's the biggest fish you've caught heaviest or biggest because the, the truthful fish not the it was this big and then it got away <laughs> Um, I would say like size wise, um, when I caught a uh, ling cod recently, just this past year, it was really big. Like, I don't know if you saw, if you saw uh, the photos of it that I posted, um, but it looked basically the size of me. I was trying to hold it. Um, funny story behind the photo. I think I have it saved in my highlights. It was so heavy and big, I couldn't hold it on my own. So I had to get someone else to hold the fish in uh, the background. But it looks like I'm holding the fish. <laughs> <laughs> so it looks like I'm holding the fish. But yeah, it, in the photo, it literally looks like almost the size of me. So what? that was uh, that was pretty interesting. I've also been like sturgeon fishing, I was uh, like which was which was pretty crazy. Um, obviously that's catch and release because you can't keep, keep a sturgeon here. Um, but yeah, my first time that I went sturgeon fishing, I got so freaked out because I haven't seen a sturgeon fish before. Huh. So, so basically I was like, I remember uh, the fish jumped and I was like, oh my God, like, what is going on? I ran to the back of the boat and I was like, oh my god, like it looks like a monster. I don't know if you've ever seen what a sturgeon fish looks like, but it looks like an alien fish. It and they're massive. Looks like a dinosaur. Yeah, they look like a prehistoric dinosaur. It's like, okay, so I fish too, and I fish for like bass and like uh yeah. like fishing, all that kind of stuff too. Um, mm -hmm. what's your favorite thing about fishing? Oh, I don't know. Just the excitement that you get when you have a fish on the line and, and when you when you catch it, it's just so satisfying. And then 
also if you're able to go home and eat the fish that you catch i feel like that's a huge part of why i enjoy it too and i can respect uh the food that i eat just because i work to get it you know um i i remember someone actually uh messaged me back to the rude comments and dm someone messaged me saying that um i was i was inhumane for for fishing and you know like why are you doing that and this and that and i was thinking in my head like i respect the the fish or whatever it is that i i catch so much more yeah when i i work for it and i catch it myself and even for you know for my dad who who goes hunting um he he he's like this the same way right you you respect the animal so much more when you're catching it on your own and you're not just picking it up at the grocery store yeah so that's 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 kind of why i enjoy it yeah what's been your favorite fish that you've caught that you've eaten I really like lingcod. Mm. How do you so like that was that was definitely a a good experience. Yeah, I came, I came home that night and I made uh, some fish and chips, basically some battered fish. It was so good. Nice. Um, all right, let's talk about let's get into reps and sets. So another rapid fire question set segment. Okay. Oh, again. Yeah, we're going on it. All right, this one's going to be pretty easy. So, bikini or dresses? Bikini or dresses? I don't know. It depends where I am. One or the other. One or the what? other. Right, let's see, right now. Right now, at this moment. Right now, at this moment, uh, well, let's say dresses, because you can wear it <laughs> more than a bikini. Your dream fishing trip. Uh, dream fishing trip. I don't know. I would love to go to like Langara Fishing Lodge or something like that, which is up north in BC, okay. and be able to to catch some halibut or something. I actually haven't uh, caught a halibut before, so that's definitely next on my list. Nice. Uh, around Vancouver, there's not really many areas where it's good for halibut fishing. Um, you have to go quite far to do that kind of stuff yeah all right bc or toronto oh <laughs> do this. Sorry, um, i would have to pick bc but i mean i am a little bit biased just because this is my hometown this is where i grew up this is where all of my friends and family are um i i did like toronto for the time that i was I was there. Um, there's definitely a lot more to do in Toronto, especially if you're into like nightlife and stuff. Um, but Vancouver is just, it's gorgeous here. I, I love it. And especially having the ocean, I mean, it's, yeah. it's nice. <laughs> especially if you like to fish. Okay. Yeah. This one is summer or winter in BC? But I was about to say summer, but then I'm I like, because ah, I like to ski I, as well. I've been skiing since I was very, very double edged swords at you. You have to choose one. Uh, I don't know. Probably, probably summer, just because I like to be outside on the ocean when it's nice and get some color on my skin, because usually I'm very, very white. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, probably summer. Uh, last one is. Seafood or meat? Probably meat. I do love seafood, but I think I'll have to pick meat. Okay. All right, let's get into the last thing now, Christine. It's, it's live great. It's, it's all about lifestyle, entrepreneur, business, just everything in viewpoint. And I think one first thing I want to ask is, for those who don't know, what is your background? So your parent, your mom is Italian. My mom is Italian. Um, my dad is mainly Czech. Um, I think he he actually took a ancestry uh, 
test not too long ago and I think there was some English that came up as well. Um, but yeah, I usually just say it's half Italian, half Czech. And then born and raised in Canada? Yes, born and raised here in Vancouver. Yeah. When did you go over to Toronto? Uh, I probably moved there about four years ago because I lived there for about three years and I moved back about a year ago now. So, yeah. Um, let's talk about you coming into the whole blogging. You talked about a little bit earlier. Um, how'd you get into it? So you got into it because you were just tired of sort of getting, getting like side sidetracked. I just wanted to be honest with you guys. (laughs) And then did you, when you started it, did you expect it to be at the level that it's, that it is, or were you just looking to do it more for I was just doing it for fun. I mean, I wasn't, at first, I wasn't really trying to get much out of it. And then I kind of started to realize like, okay, maybe I should take this a little bit more seriously. Um, But yeah, people like uh, friends, even they would always tell me like, why don't you take your food stuff more seriously? Took me years to actually take it more seriously, but it, it eventually happened. Yeah. Is that now um, your full time? Uh, I wouldn't really say that it's a full time job just because I'm not really making that much income off of it, especially because I don't really like to take on uh, like sponsorships or that kind of stuff mm. unless I really know the brand or the product. So, I mean, there's been numerous times where I get offered certain things and I, I just don't. I don't really care to do it. <laughs> Would you want yeah. it then as a full-time job? Uh, be a judge on a food show. <laughs> oh, is that what you want? I feel like that kind of stuff would be, would be like a dream job for me. Yeah, just anything revolving food. I, I've had numerous people be like, oh, why don't you open up a restaurant or do that kind of stuff? And kudos to anyone like kudos for you to you for having a restaurant because oh my god it is one of the hardest businesses to get into let's just preface Um, i don't have a restaurant anymore i never actually did i helped i thought i I thought that egg bay was yours yeah i helped open plenty of it i don't i don't own it i i helped open it and the car oh okay okay got you just exactly like what you said. It's a lot of work. It's it lot is. Work. Yeah. People don't realize it, right? And it's hard. Would Would you open? It's pressure? tough. It's It's so hard. I don't think personally I would ever want to open up a restaurant unless you know I was extremely bored and I had all types of crazy money and it was just kind of like okay, let's do it. But um, yeah, it's just. It would be way too tough it's not really kind of something that i would ever want to get into that's interesting because what you just said was exactly what i tell people Mm -hmm. i would open a restaurant i would open a restaurant yeah i'm sure that you get it all the time too like why don't you open a restaurant because your cooking is like amazing so it's you know thank you Uh people people don't understand like what it takes to open a restaurant and all of the hard work and commitment and hours that you need to put in um, to be there. It's just crazy. Yeah. Um, if you, okay, let's say if you were to open a restaurant, what would it be? Asian fusion. What, what does Asian fusion mean? Like, are we talking like <laughs> Mr. Lee? Like kind of kind of things or uh, yeah, kind of like kind of like that kind of style. Um, yeah, it's just a mix of like American food with Asian food. Yeah. So then, would you have like some sort of Asian burger? That's like the first thing that comes to my head. Like some sort of <laughs> you know, you know, I actually had this um, idea. Which I I think that there's a few places in the U.S. that have done. It's crazy, though, because I thought of this idea way before it actually came out. And I kind of regretted, like, not 
uh, doing it. But then again, the restaurant business is kind of, uh, so didn't really want to get into it. But there's a few restaurants that I know of that are kind of doing this idea, which is uh, do like fusion dumplings, which would be like, uh, like a, a cheeseburger dumpling like that's very very popular now and do like dessert dumplings like a cheesecake dumpling um, you know just just kind of like combine Americanized food or even like a curry dumpling like a butter chicken dumpling kind of thing um, yeah that, that was something that I, I thought of like I don't even know I was probably like 21 years old maybe <laughs> And that was quite a while ago, so yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, I love those trends. Those are I like stuff like that. A lot of times, people back in the day would be like, "Don't mix other things with Asian cuisine." Or don't the, the term fusion has such a yeah. Connotation. Oh yeah, I'm I'm totally like for you know authenticity. Um, that's why when I cook, I try and make it as authentic as possible unless i'm specifying that it is fusion it's not authentic and i think that's something that a lot of people um get kind of uptight about and almost offended like oh like that's not asian food or like why are you doing that this and that and i'm like well i'm not trying to cook authentic food here i'm trying to experiment with different flavors Mm. And that's what I love to do. I, I love experimenting in the kitchen, so. Got you. Now, something else that, you, um, that I wanted to ask you is, you have on your, your profile that you're, you're a Google local guide. Mm -hmm. uh, do you still do that? Is that something that you offer at the moment, or? Uh, I haven't been that active on it uh, since, I think, COVID started, just because I really been I still go out to eat here here and there um but I'm definitely not as active as I used to be um I'm still a little bit nervous going out lately um are you, just, are you my, my system isn't the greatest so I have to be careful so so with that said you're not going out that often you're uh I mean I, I still go out here and there but it's like I don't, I haven't really gone out to try a lot of new restaurants. Um, I will here and there, but not as much as I used to. If I do go to a restaurant, it's often restaurants that I've already gone to and I kind of feel comfortable going to just cause I know uh, the restaurant. Mm. Um, yeah, but I've definitely been cooking at home quite a bit. Lately. You didn't talk about this earlier, but where would you, if right now, if you could, all things go where would you want to go to eat in Vancouver like say if I was to come over and I'd be like Christine let's go out for eat let's go out to eat where would you take me where would be the spot what do you feel like eating <laughs> I just feel like I just want good food you just want good food oh man chill but bring some friends or whatever and have a good time it doesn't have to be fancy anything like that mm. I don't know. I'm like trying to think. You put me on the spot. <laughs> I have to think here. Uh, well, I'd definitely take you out to Richmond to okay. eat the, the Asian food out there. Um, What's your favorite Asian restaurant? Oh, my for Szechuan food. For Szechuan food. If you wanted to take me for that Szechuan food. That's the thing. I have not found a restaurant here yet um, that I really, really liked. I'm quite picky. So a lot of the time I don't go back to certain restaurants unless I think it's like really, really good. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I mean... I don't know. It's okay. You know what? We'll, we'll, we'll I haven't been to a restaurant where I'm just like super blown away. I think there was only one restaurant yeah, let's in talk Toronto about that. then let's that talk about, I was really let's blown away. That blew you, like that blew you away. What was the restaurant? Aloe. Yeah, I went to Aloe. I, I have heard um, from other people that it was kind of hit or miss. 
Um, but at least when I went, it was really good. What was like, it about Aloe and like Patrick Chris shout out to you and the whole crew, <laughs> um, Kevin, those guys. What was it about Aloe that you were like, whoa? Was it the was it the technique, the flavors, the whole? It was just the the food in general. I mean. Uh, I do take into consideration the ambiance and the service and all, all of the other aspects when it comes to a restaurant. But for me, the main thing that I care about personally is taste. And that's why um, a lot of, I don't want to <laughs> say it in a bad way, but there's a lot of uh, like Chinese restaurants that are terrible service, but the food is freaking good. I think you know? <laughs> that is actually like uh, a characteristic of good Chinese food. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, get horrible service. You're like, we're starting on a good. Yeah, yeah. Food, or even, or even like the, the Vietnamese restaurants that look really grunt, like grungy and kind of, you know, like, ooh, I don't know if I should eat here. But those restaurants are the best. <laughs> That's when you know that they have good food if it looks a little bit shady. <laughs> you know that they're, you're, you're like, yo, the auntie uncle is a little too nice to me. The yeah. food's not gonna taste that good. Okay. Um, Christine, we're going to do something called social hour, cool? So we're going to do a quick deep dive into some of your social media photos, and we're going to get the behind the scenes story behind it. Okay. <laughs> You're a little nervous here. <laughs> I've been nervous this whole time. That's why I was like, I need to have a drink because I'm a little bit nervous. <laughs> All right, but we'll do this. Okay, let me share this with you and we'll get right into it. You'll be okay. Oh, I remember that photo. That was All a right. while ago. Okay, so I wanted to bring this photo up because first off, even just watching here, you're, you have no troubles with chopsticks. No. <laughs> you have no trouble with it, but this photo, you have, you're, you're using both hands. So I wanted to ask you, are you ambidextrous? Can you hold the chopstick through your left hand? Um, I wouldn't say that it is something that I do. Um, I will do it sometimes for a photo or something, but I'm not really comfortable using my left hand. Okay, now in this photo, did you like the pho more or did you want, did you like the boom, uh, boom more? Uh, to be honest, there's a reason why I didn't take the restaurant just because the pho wasn't really good. <laughs> Okay, but out of the out of the two two soups, which one would you rather have? Like in general, uh, the the regular beef pho. Okay. Yeah. Um, next one, this one. Oh, that was a nice experience. What was yeah. this? Talk, talk to us about it. Tell us like where this is, what it's about. Uh yeah, that that was a restaurant in uh in Toronto. Uh, they were doing. Uh, this uh this food competitor that I know uh he was doing uh a food competition that day and he invited a, a few bloggers to come experience it as well it's basically the biggest pizza made ever in all of Canada I don't know if it still stands the biggest pizza but at least when we did it it was the biggest pizza ever made um they ha they ha it, it was fun they had to get a quite a few different uh, tools, I guess, to make that pizza specifically. Um, it looks like it's cooked very well though. Like the crust on it is great. You've got the nice blistering. Mm -hmm. Was it tasty? Yeah, yeah it, w it wasn't easy for them, that's for sure. <laughs> was it tasty? Did you get to eat it? I wouldn't say it was the best pizza I have. I think Fair it was enough. more for show, but it was still good. Yeah, it was still good. Mm -hmm. Who was your, uh, who was the, who was the person that was doing the food competition? Oh, I can't remember what his Instagram, I think it was Josh something. I'm really bad with names and I'm really forgetful. I can, I can send it to you later, um, but he, he's, he's, he's pretty, he's pretty popular. Uh, I also did, I also went with him to another one at uh, Addison Barbecue place. Addison is so good. I, I personally yes, like Yes, their beef brisket, though. I like Addison. Adam Scully, Sullivan. 
you guys what's up um mm -hmm. okay next one is this one mm -hmm. that was fun this is this is pretty much you this is really you yeah um, um how what did you catch your that salmon on what did i catch there well that's what, that's catch on? Like, what do you use as bait what do you use as bait for what you oh say? a fisherwoman can't say that <laughs> You are true. Oh, no you way I'm telling you what I'm using for bait. <laughs> uh, but do you, is salmon your favorite fish to catch, would you say? Or the most that you usually get cast? Um, well, hmm. when it comes to ocean fishing, I would say that salmon is more fun than like rock fishing. Because uh, there's more of a fight and it's more fun. Um, but river fishing, I would say, is probably the most crazy type of fishing that I've done, at least. Um, there's a lot of stuff that goes into river fishing. <laughs> and usually it's, it's a pretty crazy fight. Like sometimes, like say for example, I'm, I'm on the boat and we're anchored in to the side and we're fighting a fish we actually have to put up anchor and kind of go down the river with the fish just so it's easier to catch it and reel it up <laughs> so it's a whole like team effort that you have to do when you're river fishing that's for sure would you ever do like because you do your like your, your your food tours but would you ever do like a fishing tour at the same time like, would I ever be a guide, like a fishing guide? Yeah. Hmm. I don't know if my skills personally are that crazy that I would do that. Okay. Um, maybe I'll get there one day, though. <laughs> I've, I've never gone uh, deep sea fishing. I've only it's, done lakes. It's like, fine. I've only done, like, um, you know, the bass, the smallmouth, the largies, um, mm -hmm. catfish, all that kind of stuff. So salmon, all that's my, it's on my list. That's definitely on my list. Well, if you come to Vancouver, I'll take you out. Yeah, that's, that's set. I thought that was already like, you know, that's already set in stone. We are going to do that. <laughs> um, okay, next one. Oh, for sure. For sure, though. If you ever come to Vancouver, definitely. All right. Red oh pop my gosh, all the live sea. Yes. <laughs> Um, do you ever keep any of the red pockets or do you? Yes, but you know, I don't know if you know this, but you're not supposed to reuse red pockets. Yes. But I do still keep them sometimes. Like I've gotten some really nice ones, like a Gucci red pocket or like this and that. And then it's kind of hard for me. Like, oh, I don't want to throw it out. It's so nice. <laughs> yeah, I do that. I, have a, I used to I have a bunch of those when I really, really nice ones and like, yeah. Do you, um, do you remember, do you actually, do you wait before you open your red pockets? Before you, open? you have to, you're supposed to wait. You're so Asian. It's, I mean, <laughs> you can't open so it up right away. <laughs> There's so many people that they just open it right away. A and lot of people don't know that, but it's proper the, to wait. I think that's a, one of the big reasons why I wanted you on this podcast was because you actually know so much about Asian culture. That yeah, I, do. I think I wanted to bring you on because I also want people who ever watch this to be like, if you go onto your page, like you go into Christine's page, her food reviews and her thoughts about food and Asian food and all that stuff is legit. Mm -hmm. legit. It's not, you know, just, it's not. I try to keep it a hundred as much as I possibly can. Yeah. <laughs> that I, 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 thought, I don't want to make a fool out of myself either. So I definitely like to do a lot of research and know what I'm talking about before I go ahead and, you know, I open it up. I did a lot about you. Because mm -hmm. it's not easy. It's not easy. And we talked about it a little bit earlier, which was, you're like, sometimes it's demotivating to post. It is super demotivating. And especially for someone like me who already deals with um, like mental health it yeah. can really take a toll on me I mean 
there's been times where someone has said a comment or or something to me and you know I, I wouldn't want to eat basically all day I wouldn't feel comfortable going out just because I'm so triggered emotionally you know it can really get get me down yeah so social can yeah. for that and that it's a big thing um, I think I think a lot of times too like you know uh people will be like oh like just just let it go like brush it off like who is this person they're not your friend they're not your family like who are they to you just kind of brush it off and you know I I do I really try and understand like this person is a nobody they're probably just trying to trigger me because they get a kick out of it but at the same time it, it is it is hard so I, I totally understand like a lot of these people who are are famous and they need to take like social media breaks and this and that just because I, I can only imagine how tough it would be for someone who is like really famous <laughs> yeah so I, I feel for them agreed um, the last mm-hmm. two is going to be really kind of fun. I, I really enjoyed when I saw these. I was like, I had to talk to you about it. Um, first one. <laughs> uh, that photo. Oh, it's so old. Yeah, I used to put, I used to post a lot of photos like that and memes on my page before. Um, true, right? <laughs> That's so true, though, because I do end up eating a lot, and a lot of my friends don't really eat as much as me, so I'm just sitting there still eating, like, oh, I'm not really that full. <laughs> yeah, because for me, I'm, I don't, I'm not a fast eater. I like to savor my food. So, like, mm. sometimes my meals, even at home and stuff, it'll be, like, two hours or whatever, just because I'm just there eating and enjoying it. Yeah. And like a lot, of, a lot of my friends, like they go right head first, right in the beginning. And then they get full and I'm just like still nitpicking and I'm like, fudge. Yeah. But, okay. <laughs> um, last one. Oh my gosh, you're bringing up all these old photos. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to be 100% honest. Like, this is so me, though, where, I don't know, I mean, I don't want to try and disgust people, but there has been numerous times where I'll eat something, and I already brush my teeth, and I'll be like, oh, should I brush my teeth again? I don't know. And then I ended up just falling asleep. Um, but yeah, that, that is another uh, picture that really describes me. <laughs> Bo- I chose both of those because both of those I relate. I totally relate. Do you? Well, I have a lot of like, <laughs> fitness friends, right? A lot of fitness friends, they're sometimes for them to stay on their diet. Mm-hmm. They'll use this as a good sort of like guideline where like if they're like, they know they're getting hungry at nighttime and they shouldn't, they've already like reached their diet, they've had all their macros and calories. They would brush their teeth. They'd be like, nope, I brushed my teeth. I can't eat anymore. Oh, no. Yeah, no. I'm so not like that. I'll purposely yeah, I'll, wait I'll, until I literally am going to sleep to brush my teeth. Agreed. All right. Yeah. Me too. Okay, let's stop sharing this. All right. Cool. So before we finish this, I just wanted to talk one more thing about is um, you mentioned YouTube. You mentioned YouTube yeah. and you mentioned that you'd love to like start one. What would your yeah. YouTube be about if you wanted to, if you were to start? So uh, I, I, I would want to do a few things with it. Um, I think I would do some cooking and mukbangs. Also just kind of uh, vlogging as well, like going out and eating. Hmm. Um, yeah, there's like like Mark Weens and, and all those guys that are really famous on, on YouTube. Like, I love watching them. Um, I would love to do something like that and just travel the world and eat food and, and vlog. I think that would be so much fun. That would literally be my dream <laughs> to do that kind of stuff. But I, I would also like to do a lot of cooking and then also some mukbang stuff just because I love to cook, love to eat, and I feel that mukbangs are so popular now it's so crazy i know yeah 
you'd be really good at it. You would. Mm-hmm. You'd hundred percent be very good at it. Um, you bring that legitimacy, and then, be, like I said, everything we've talked about before. It's when you have legitimacy, and then you have something that makes you stand out. Then you're super unique, and you've got this little niche, and that's what you really, really got. Um, mm-hmm. Honestly, Christine, that's pretty much it. This is that was the end of it. Um, I'm going to hand it over to you and let you take over the podcast for whatever time you want, but just let anybody know a little bit about you or anything you want to tell them, where they can follow you, et cetera. Um, yeah, the Serving, Serving It Up podcast is yours. I feel like I want to ask you some questions. You've been interrogating me this whole time. I'm like, okay. what about you? Okay, we can do that. I mean, Let's we, do that. we've talked and, and all that stuff over instagram and but i don't really know that much about you like because we haven't met in person before Uh um let's bring it on let's go (laughs) (laughs) i'm like who should i ask you um i i saw you post something recently about how how you battled with with cancer or something like that Mm -hmm. how old were you uh 17 you were 17 what kind of cancer was it again? Um, I had non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Oh boy. And how, how, how is that dealing with that? Uh, I've been 13 years remission. 13 years right. free. Um, I had it here actually through my eye. There's a little scar. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I had it there and then I did six months of radiation and chemotherapy um, and have a look back. And that's sort of where mm-hmm. This podcast comes from so like the three pillars of eat good look and live great and six pack chef as a whole is just the direct representation of me so it's all the food health and fitness and lifestyle hmm. mm-hmm. interesting yeah that, that must have been tough to deal with especially at, at 17 years old right yeah it was hard it was, it was definitely one of the mm-hmm. most difficult things i've ever gone through but yeah. it's also one of the most life-changing i bet that have happened to me because mm-hmm. that changed a lot of, if not everything, about how I view life, um, how I go about sort of just doing things. I would never do a podcast if I didn't want to, if I didn't have that courage or confidence to be like, hey, I don't want to regret maybe not trying to do a podcast. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, I love doing the podcast because I get to know people. I get to know people mm-hmm. from three things that I really care about. You know, what do they eat? How do they like to eat? You know, their health and fitness or their fashion and aesthetics. And then finally, like, what's going on with your life? So mm-hmm. for me, this is, in a way, um, something that allows me to reach out to people. And I think that from sharing people's stories, regardless of whether it's a food blogger or an entrepreneur or, like, um, you know, a, a bodybuilder or anything like that, everybody's story will somehow have some piece of valuable wisdom, knowledge, or s- advice that somebody can relate to. And if mm-hmm. the podcast becomes just a channel or an outlet that allows that one advice to be heard, then that's it. Um, mm-hmm. yeah, for me, the, uh, cancer was one thing where it made me think that I truly believe as human beings, we all have this responsibility that every day, if we don't positively influence somebody in some way, it could be something as simple as opening a door or complimenting someone on how they look or something like that then if we ever stop and have a day where we don't add any benefit to the world, to anybody around us, um, that's the day where we don't, I guess, deserve to live anymore. It's, um, it's one of those. So if you think that, that makes it a big, 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 big thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, I completely agree with you on that one. I, I think it's, it's great that you're so open and stuff about that because a lot of the time people – you know, that are possibly going through the same thing, uh, need someone to relate to. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. it's yeah, I, I feel that it's, it's so great in so many ways, people, especially that people, uh, people nowadays are speaking about like mental health yeah. and people are opening up about experiences and, and stuff that they've gone through. I think it's, it's, it's really good. Yeah. And especially when, when you brought up about the mental health thing, it's, um, it's something that I learned where sometimes a lot of our, it was the point where we used our weaknesses to become someone's strengths. Mm-hmm. Sometimes, like for instance, like for you to open up and say, you know, 
I could be doing a lot more stuff um, if sometimes, you know, some of those, those negative comments or any of those pressures get to me. That sort of mm-hmm. holds a lot of people back. And whether even just like us talking about it, if someone hears this and they're like, you know what, like Christine's doing so well and she's still dealing with this. It's okay if I, I need to deal with this too. And then it helps mm-hmm. people to do something. Um, yeah. It, it's crazy. Cause, uh, I remember it was like mental health day, maybe a year or two ago. And even I, I posted something on, on my story. Um, this, you know, I didn't really get into my experience with it, but I just said like for someone that has dealt with it for quite a chunk of my life, um, you know, it, it sucks. And if anyone's going through through something, you know, reach out, get help kind of thing. And someone actually had the nerve to message me and say, what do you know about mental health? kind of thing like you're you're living a great life and I think that's so important for people to not judge a book by its cover you know especially on Instagram like people post stuff on Instagram all the good stuff no one's posting what they're going through on the daily like you're not going to post all the thoughts that are going through your head if they're bad thoughts it's more of the good stuff that you want to posts on on social media and you know people just have to be more kind you you really never know what what someone's going through behind closed doors agreed yeah I I was pretty upset that someone had the nerve to message me and and kind of call me out for for almost lying or something about having you know mental health issues and it was just like I just can't believe we live in this world (laughs) like come on I think, and I, I mentioned it earlier, which was a big thing where I respect you a lot for that because I know the amount of, we talk about it behind the scenes and stuff, but the amount of hate you get and you still, even with, I guess, your own demons, you deal with it really, really well. You do, you deal with Thank it. Thank you. Well, so you should be proud of yourself. I mean, I, I probably could deal with it a lot better and it's, it's something that I'm, I'm working on, you know, almost daily. And it's something that I struggle with daily. Um, but I mean, I, I, I definitely have been working on it uh, over the years. So yeah, it, it's tough though. It's, it's a long battle. And, you know, for, for a lot of people, it never really goes away completely. It kind of goes through, you know, phases where it, it can be good and it can be bad. And sometimes, you know, for me, for example, I'll be completely fine for, for a while. And then all of a sudden, it's coming back up again and then I almost have like almost like flare-ups in a sense yeah. where it can be it can be worse but yeah it, it's something that I I I kind of deal with on a daily um but we work on it on the daily too so <laughs> yeah honestly I think um I think that's a perfect way to sort of segue and like end it off is everybody should just be kind everybody should mm-hmm. be kind in life Everybody should enjoy the outdoors. Everybody should eat great food. Yeah, eat good food. (laughs) All right. Well, anyways, Christine, thank you for joining us on the Serving It Up podcast. Hope you have an amazing time. And guys, thank you guys for watching. And until then, we'll see you on the next episode. Okay. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye.